welcome i welcome you all to this course sandhi in paninian grammar in the previous lectures we looked at the aims and objectives of this particular course we looked at the textual as well as the systemic approaches and other approaches that we shall study in this particular course which are related to sandhi in this lecture we shall be discussing the sources that we are going to study in the paninian grammar with respect to sandhi in the previous lecture we discussed about the pattern of evaluation and we said that along with the generation as well as the analysis of sandhi a student is supposed to know the sutras which cause the generation as well as the analysis of that particular sandhi also the meaning of the sutra when known will provide the student better understanding of the process of sandhi and also the process of the derivation of the unit in terms of pada as well as vakya so in this lecture we shall take a look at the sutras that we shall be studying in this particular course these sutras are taken from the grammar composed by panini called ashtadhyayi and various types of sutras we shall study in the course of this particular course let us look at those sutras one by one the first one is the saudnya sutra type these sutras enlist various saudnyas various technical terms that are used by panini in his description of what is known as sandhi the very first and foremost technical term that we need to understand is savarna homogeneity homogeneous sound this is defined by panini in the sutra 119 tulyasya prayatnam savarnam then we should also know the use of the technique of pratyahara which enables panini to describe the process of sandhi that happens on a vast data in a very brief manner possible this technique of pratyahara is explained in the sutra 1171 namely adirantena saheta we shall study this sutra also in detail this sutra teaches how to form the technical term pratyahara like ek yan etc other important technical terms are in terms of the features of the sounds so rasva dirgha and plutha are commonly occurring terms when the sandhi is described 
So the sutra, Ukalo Jharasva Dirgha Plataha, which is 1, 2, 27, defines what is Rasva, what is Dirgha, and what is Plata. And these are the terms, these are the features which apply to a vowel, which is defined as Ukala. So we shall look into this definition in detail. Related terms are Laghu and Guru, which we shall also study in the course. Then comes a very important term, namely Samhita. And this term is defined by the Sutra 14109 by saying that Paraha Sannikarshaha Samhita. And there is a good relationship between Samhita and Sandhi, which we shall explain later on. The commentators have commented on this sutra and what exactly this Paraha Sadnikarshaha means. And we shall take a closer look at this in the course later on. Similarly, there is a concept of avasana, which is defined as viramo vasanam by 14110. Apart from these sutras, which define technical terms related to sadhi, there are some more technical terms that we shall study. The sutras that are presented on the slide are some of the sutras and there may be some more that we will be able to study as the course progresses. Although Panini does not define and also does not even mention the word Sandhi, we will have to define what Sandhi is. And we will take help of the sources and we shall define what Sandhi is in relation with obviously what Samhita is and so on and so forth. Then we move on to certain meta rules that are required in order to understand what Sandhi is and we shall study them also. These are called the Paribhasha Sutras and the concept of Sandhi requires the understanding of these Paribhashas better. Shashti Sthane Yoga 1149. This Paribhasha defines the metalinguistic meaning of the sixth case in the Ashtadhyayi, which lays down a fundamental principle on which the meta language of Panini functions, and that is the methodology of substitution. And this methodology presupposes an element which is substituted by another element in a given environment. So the element which gets substituted is called substituent and the element which substitutes is called a substitute. And this precise relationship between those two elements that gets stated by the Sutra 1149 which says that a genitive case Shashti which is, which is attached to a particular element denotes that that element is the substituent and in place of that element then there will be the substitute that is stated in a particular Sutra. 
Similarly, tasminiti nirdishte purvasya and tasmadityuttarasya, these two sutras, they lay down the meaning of the seventh case and the fifth case respectively, saptami and panchami. As far as the meta language of Panini is concerned, Tasminiti Nirdishte Purvasya states that the meaning of the Saptami or the seventh case in the meta language of Panini is immediately before, and the fifth case means immediately after. These two sutras lay down the principles of the environment as far as the process of substitution is concerned. These we shall study in this particular course. These are very important Paribhasha Sutras. Then we also have Achascha, which is a Padopasthapaka Paribhasha. This Sutra states a meta rule saying that whenever the words Rasvadirga and Plutha are mentioned in a sutra and the substitutions Rasvadirga and Plutha are stated, the word Achaha is supplied. What this means and how this comes into being and what are the examples etc. that we shall study in the later part of this particular course. These are some of the Parivasha Sutras that are very much relevant in order to understand the Sandhi better. And we shall study them. Coming to the next type of Sutras, namely the Vidhi Sutras, we shall study following very important Sutras as the course progresses. Iko Yanachi is the very first sutra 6177 which prescribes the Yan Sandhi. Echo Yavayavaha which is 6178 which prescribes the A Yavayav Sandhi. They will be studied and then there are some other details of these two which will be also studied. Then we have Ad Gunaha 6187 prescribing the Guna Sandhi and Vriddhi Rechi prescribing the Vriddhi Sandhi. This is 6188. They will be also studied. Similarly, the Pararupa Sandhi that is stated in the small subsection starting with 6190 for Ingi Pararupam will be studied. The other important Sandhi is Savarna Dirgha Sandhi, which is stated by Akas Savarne Dirghaha 61101, as well as the Purvarupa Sandhi stated by Inga Padantadati will also be studied. Inga Padantadati is 61. 107. All the sutras that are mentioned on this slide, they deal primarily with the Swara Sandhi or Vowel Sandhi or Ach Sandhi as they are known in Paninian terminology. Sandhi in place of a Swara. Next, we go to the set of sutras which talk about a very peculiar phenomenon called Prakriti Bhava, where the Sandhi does not occur, even though the conditions for the occurrence of that particular Sandhi do exist. This is called Prakriti Bhava. Although this is the absence of Sandhi, because it is related to the Sandhi as a phenomenon, we shall study these sutras as well. In fact, this is studied 
also in the traditional curriculum. And in fact, it is regarded as one of the chapters of the Sandhi, collectively referred to as Pancha Sandhi Prakaranam. Some of the sutras that we shall study in this particular subsection are Plutap Pragriya Achinityam, 6 125, Iko Asabarane Shakalyasya Rasvascha, 6 127, and the Sutra 6 125 prescribes the absence of the Sandhi with respect to Plutha and Pragriya. And then we have sutras which describe what is a Plutha and what is a Pragriya. Sutras starting from 111, Idu De Dvivachanam Pragriham, they define what is a Pragriya. And sutras beginning from Vakyasya Tehe Plutha Udataha 8382, they define what is a Plutha and where it all ha happens. They will be dealt with in this particular section. Although Pragriya is a technical term, a Saudhnya, it is actually discussed under the Vidhi Sutra over here primarily because it is more relevant in this Prakriti Bhava section. This is how it is discussed also in the texts belonging to the Paninian grammatical tradition, namely the Vayakarana, Siddhanta Kaumudi, etc. Then we go to the next set of sutras, which primarily are known as the sutras dealing with the Hal Sandhi or the Vyanjana Sandhi or the Consonant Sandhi. And some of them are Nashchavya Prashan 837, Monuswaraha 8323. This sutra lays down conditions in which an Anuswara comes into being. There is one more sutra which also deals with the same topic that we shall deal. Nascha Padantasya Jali. Then we have sutras like Stoho Shchuna Shchuhu 8440 talking about the Shchutva Sandhi. Shtuna Shtuhu 8441 discussing the Shtutva Sandhi over here. Similarly, we have Anuswarasya Yai Parasabaranaha, a very important sutra, 8458, talking about the Parasabarana Sandhi. And the option also stated by the subsequent sutra, Va Padantasya. These sutras we shall also discuss when we discuss the Hal Sandhi or the Vyanjana Sandhi and also the Consonant Sandhi. Along with them, there will be some other sutras that will also be discussed, like the sutras which talk about the reduplication of the sound, Acho Rahabhyam Dve or Anachi Cha and so on. Then we move to the next set of sutras, which are also known to discuss what is known as Visarga Sandhi, notably Visarjaniyasya Saha 8334. Visarga plays a very important part as far as the Sanskrit Padas and the Vakyas are concerned. And then this Visarga is also seen replaced by various elements in the sentences of Sanskrit. So, taking stock of all of them together will be the aim to deal with into this particular subsection, also known as Visarga Sandhi. So, Visarjani Saha 8334 is an important sutra in this regard. And then we have Sharpare Visarjani Yaha 8335. Similarly, Va Shari 8336 and So Padadau 8338 
as well as Inaha Shaha 8339 will be studied in detail in this particular section. Then we come to the fifth subsection in the Sandhi which is known as Swadi Sandhi in which following sutras will be studied. Prathamayoho Purva Savarnaha 61102 prescribing the Purva Savarna Dirgha in the Prathama and Dvitiya Vibhaktis very domain specific Vibhakti specific sutra, an important sutra. Then we have Atorora Pluta the Plute, 61113, which is also very, very crucial, very, very important. And Hashicha, 61114. Together with them, we can explain quite a lot of data that is visible in the Sanskrit language. Similarly, we have Bhobago Agho Apurvasya Yoshi 8.3.17 and Hali Sarvesham 8.3.22. And there will be some more sutras which we shall also study when we look at the Swadhi Sandhi. So now, amongst the Vidhi sutras, we have so far seen the sutras dealing with Swara Sandhi or vowel sandhi or ach sandhi. Then we looked at the sutras which deal with prakriti bhava, absence of the sandhi, where sounds remain in their own form without getting any modification. Then we saw the sutras dealing with hal sandhi or vyanjana sandhi or consonant sandhi. Then we took note of the sutras which deal with Visarga Sandhi. Then we saw the sutras that we shall study which describe the Swadhi Sandhi. So these are the Pancha Sandhis that we shall cover in this particular course with the help of these sutras. So we shall explain how the meanings of these sutras are made and how they affect a particular sandhi. And we shall take concrete examples to illustrate the sandhi that is prescribed by these sutras. These are stated to be vidhi sutras primarily because they prescribe the modification, the sandhi that happens in respective environments to respective sounds. In these sutras are aided by the Saudhya sutras as well as the Paribhasha sutras and they eventually bring about the phenomenon called Sandhi into being in sentence. Apart from these Pancha Sandhis, there are two more types of Vidhi Sutras which we shall study when we will study the Sandhi phenomena in this particular course. The Sutras mentioned on this particular slide, they refer to the Agamas or the Augments that are inserted in the derivation process with respect to Sandhis. They are Checha stated by 6173. Guno Kuktuk Shari by 8328, Dasi Dhut by 8329, Shi Tuk by 8331, Namor Haspada Chingamun 8332. Checha prescribes the augment T mentioned as Tuk in 6173, Guno Kuktuk Shari prescribes the augments cook and took mentioned in this sutra 8328. The augment dhut is mentioned in dasi dhut 8329. The augment took is mentioned in the sutra she took 
8331 and the augment ngamut is mentioned in the sutra ngamo rasva dachi ngamut nityam 8332 we shall study them also in detail then we have a set of sutras which deal with the accents which are related to the sandhis that are mentioned earlier they are also part of the curriculum of this particular course and they are anudattasya cha yatro datta lopaha 61161 we also have udatta sparitayor yanah sparito anudattasya 824 एकादेश उदात्तेन उदात्तः 825 स्वरितो वानुदात्ते पदादौ 826 दीज आर द सूत्रस एंड देयर विल बी सम मोर सूत्रस व्हिच डील विद द स्वर व्हिच डील विद द संधि दैट इज रिलेटेड विद द स्वर और एक्सेंट अपार्ट फ्रॉम द विधि सूत्रस the next set and type of sutras that we shall study are the atidesha sutras and one of the important most important atidesha sutras is sthanivat adesho analvidhau stated by 1156 sthanivat adesho analvidhau is the backbone of the entire systemic process stated by panini this also states down the relation between the substituent and the substitute and it says that an adesha or a substitute is to be considered like a substituent which it replaces this needs to be carefully studied in order to understand the sandhi better and we shall spend some time in understanding this particular sutra similarly 6185 is antadi vachcha which is a very peculiar sutra peculiar kind of atidesha atidesha sutra which we shall study and then the adhikara sutras which are important which govern the sandhi they will also be studied samhitayam 6172 which governs the swara sandhi and also the prakriti bhava sandhi ekah purva parayoho which is part of the samhitayam adhikara then purvatra siddham a very important sutra which divides the text of ashtadhyayi into two sapada saptadhyayi and tripadi and then says that the tripadi is non existent for the sapada saptadhyayi and parts of the vyanjana sandhi and the visarga sandhi and also the swadi sandhi are stated in the tripadi which affects in absence of double sandhi so to speak and such sandhi and sandhi absences can be explained with the help of this particular sutra similarly we have samhitayam mentioned once again in 82108 which is an adhikara which continues up to the end of the ashtadhyayi and this adhikara governs the vyanjana sandhi as well as the visarga sandhi which is very very important and we shall study this in detail apart from these sutras there are some other texts which are important in order to understand the sandhi better here is a verse which is quoted in the tradition which talks about the samhita and lays down some conditions where samhita is done where it is optional and where it is to be done always samhitaika pade nitya nitya dhatu pasargayo 
नित्या समासे वाक्य तो साविवक्षा अपेक्षते विशल स्टडी दिस वर्स दिस सोर्स इन डिटेल एंड ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ संधि इज प्लेस्ड इन अकॉर्डेंस विद द मीनिंग ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर वर्स एंड सम अदर वर्सेस एज वेल सम ऑफ द अदर बेसिक टेक्स्ट्स दैट विल बिकम पार्ट ऑफ आवर स्टडी आर मातृका विच इज द बेसिक अल्फाबेट विच इज ऑल्सो टॉट इन द करंट करिकुलम Apart from that, we shall also study the Pratyahara Sutras, where the basic alphabet is rearranged, and then the Paniniya Shiksha, stating the process of speech production, wherein the properties of sounds are stated in terms of the place of articulation and the effort of articulation. We shall study them in detail as well. these sutras will be explained together with the source examples and these examples will be taken primarily from these texts the vyakarana siddhanta kaumudi which was composed around 17th century ce by a great scholar called bhattoji dikshit going backwards in history then comes kashika vritti another very very crucial very important text the only available complete commentary on the sutras of ashtadhyayi which is the oldest complete commentary on ashtadhyayi available today composed in around 7th century ce by jayaditya and vamana and going back vyakarana mahabhashya composed by the great patanjali in and around 150 bce will be our source for discussions as well as examples together with these we shall study the phenomenon called sandhi in sanskrit as described in paninian grammar thank you very much